Hello guys, it's MeshTech here. Welcome to this new video. Today I want to show you how to make use of RetroArch's internal playlist scanner on your RG350. The playlist scanner of RetroArch is a functionality to add ROMs to a playlist automatically within RetroArch. So there is no more need to scan for manual entries in a playlist like we did before in my previous video. Remember the video where I showed you how to install RetroArch and do some basic setup on it? No. Today I'm going to show you what files we need and what needs to be configured in RetroArch to make use of its internal ROM scanner. So grab your RG350 and let's get started. So before we create a new playlist on RetroArch, we might want to delete an existing playlist. In my last video I showed you how to manually scan and add a new ROM list or playlist to RetroArch. Now in this video I want to show you how to delete an existing list, this list, and create a new one. So if you want to delete a list on your RG350 like I have here, um, this list, my Nintendo Entertainment System list, you can see I have all my ROMs are manually added to the list or I added to the list with a manual scan. Now I want to delete this list. Therefore, you have to connect to your RG350. I will do this over Wi-Fi. Okay. And you need to go to your RetroArch folder. It's located on media data local home dot config RetroArch. And there you will find a folder called playlists. Enter this folder and you will see all the playlists that RetroArch has in his system. We want to delete the Nintendo Entertainment System list, so just click on it, say delete, OK, and the list is gone. Back on our RG350, we have to go down here and restart RetroArch to apply the change. All right. Now that we've deleted a playlist, we are ready to start to create a new playlist within RetroArch. Before we do that, we're going to need some files. I put you a link into the video description where you find these files. If you follow my link, you will come to my Google Drive where I put all the files you need together. The files we need today are located in the course and the database directory. So copy the content of the course directory and the database directory to your PC. I will do this right now and meet you right back when you're done. Alright, now that you downloaded the course and the database directory from my Google Drive to your PC, it's time to transfer them over to your RG350. Therefore, connect to your RG350 with WinSCP and locate to the media data local home dot config retroarch folder again. There you find the same folders called cores and database and all we have to do is just to copy over the cores directory with a drag and drop and the database directory to your RG350 into this directory over here. As long as this is um, copying for you, um, I want to say a few words to these two directories and why they are important for RetroArch to create a playlist for you. So as you know, every ROM is associated to a core, which is the associated emulator. So what RetroArch needs is the information files to each core. So as you can see in this list I shared with you, there are cores called or ending with .so and some associated info files for the cores. These info files have content that is necessary for RetroArch to identify your cores and associate it to the system. In the database directory, you will find more information about systems that can be shown on RetroArch where you can create playlists for. For example, today we want to make a playlist for Nintendo Entertainment System and 
the information for this is located in this database file right here. Okay, so copy these um, folders over. I think it's gonna take some time and I will meet you right back when you finish the copy process. Alright, now that we copied over all the necessary data to our RetroArch folder, it's time to restart RetroArch one last time for the changes to take effect. So go back to your RG350, go to the main menu and restart it. Okay, after it is restarted, there is one final configuration step to be done. It's in the main menu, you have to navigate to load content right here, then go all the way down where it says file browser and there we need to activate automatically add content for me I already turned this on if you wanna turn it on when it's turned off you can either use the d-pad left right to toggle the state or just use the A button to toggle it with the B button we switch back until we are in the main menu and now we're able to switch over to a section called import content. Now this time that we're able to scan a directory automatically, we choose scan directory. Now we navigate to our ROMs directory. For me it's on media RG350 ROMs and I want to manually update my Nintendo Entertainment Systems folder. So I click on it, go down and, and choose scan this directory and start. As you will see automatic scanning within RetroArch is slower than manual scanning within RetroArch but you will see a slight content, a uh, slight difference be, uh, between a manual scan and this automatic scan. Now it's finished. Press the B button to jump back to the main menu. And as you can see now, all games or all game lists that are scanned within RetroArch automatically get a symbol associated to the system. So like over here, what I did before, when I scanned my Game Boy um, ROM directory and added a Game Boy playlist, it adds a little Game Boy symbol for it. For the NES, it adds a little NES controller. And for me, I like this because reading symbols is much quicker than reading text. Like before, you only had all these record signs or these record symbols up there and you always had to read uh, what cores are within this list. So now you can scroll over and you will see directly, okay, this is a Nintendo Entertainment System playlist, this is a Game Boy playlist, and for me it's, it's much quicker to read. This is the advantage you get, so automatic scanning and adding these beautiful symbols, like also the cat ridges there now are, have a different symbol. But on the downside, it doesn't find all the ROMs, and yeah, that's a disadvantage of this because it only finds proper ROMs, ROMs that are listed in the database. So if you have the feeling that not all of your ROMs are being found with this method, you might want to fall back to the, to the method to add them with a manual scan. So yeah, this is actually what I wanted to show you um, for today. All the other um, systems are going to be added in the same way. Just go to import content, say scan, scan directory and navigate to a different ROM directory like your Super Nintendo games or PlayStation games or whatever and add them to RetroArch. It automatically creates a playlist named with the ROM's folder name and that's it. If you now start a ROM from a new scanned list, you would mention that the ROM is um, not associated to a system. So 
it's scanned with the information of a Nintendo system, but it lets you choose from different cores that you might want to use to run your specific ROM. So for example, let's play Legend of Zelda. So we choose that ROM, say run, and now it finds up to three different cores that could run this ROM. And for example, we choose the NES Famicom FCE UMM core. So we start it, now it's associated to that ROM. If we now hit run, it will start the core and load the ROM in association. So you can play around with different cores and your ROMs. If you don't like it, you can reset the core association. So if you push the button here, you remove the association between the core and the ROM. And the next time you start it, you can choose to start it with a different core. Now let's say we start Zelda with a Nestopia core. Okay, now we associated the Nestopia core to this ROM. We run it. And yeah. As you might mention, the Nestopia core is uh, less powerful, so I don't know if you hear the, the sound glitches here. So for NES games, I recommend you guys using the, the FCE UMM core. So each time you start a new ROM, you can choose with uh, what core you want to run it. You guys might already have mentioned that I have box arts on my Game Boy list right here. Uh, this is something I want to show you in my next video, how to add box arts to, to your playlists. All right, that's the last thing I want to show you for today. I hope you liked the video. If you haven't subscribed yet, subscribe to my channel, ring the bell so you don't miss my further videos. Thank you for watching. Happy gaming. See you in my next video. Bye.